Good afternoon. It is April 2nd, 2013. This is Jason Horak reporting on the Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. Um, what we're looking at here is a Power Lab 8 um, helicopter battery charger. Um, this is for like RC helicopters and uh, I bought this a while ago to do a bunch of battery testing and bottom balancing and all kinds of fun stuff on the electric car. Um, and I just kind of wanted to go over a little bit today about what it takes to monitor uh, what's going on in the car as I'm driving along and uh, what I'm going to do for this little experiment um, coming up later this afternoon where I'm going to drive the car hopefully <laughs> over a hundred miles um, and see how it does. Uh, this is after damaging my batteries um, by over discharging them and uh, perhaps overcharging them. Well, not really uh, so much, but anyway. So I'm going to be monitoring a single battery and uh, kind of wanted to show you what I'm going to do to make that happen. So just to kind of go over the power lab um, to start with, this is the unit. Um, I forget exactly how expensive they are. Uh, a couple hundred bucks anyway. They've got a, a, a heat sink on the bottom so that when they're discharging vast amounts of power or even charging, uh, it can expel the heat uh, that this thing generates uh, out the back of those little fans. Um, this connection is actually the power lead and how you get power to this unit to make it go. And it comes with, by default, a couple alligator clips. And so you put these on a big old 12 volt battery and you plug in this special little connector which is uh, positive is kind of like a not sure how well that's going to go on a camera but <laughs> uh, positive is on this side and it's the non-circular uh, plug and uh, and then the circle one is the negative and so that just plugs into this side on here like so um, so anyway it's a nice secure fit and that's what they're what it's for um, and what I've done is I put a little, this is a cigarette lighter uh, or a DC plug on here and one of these ends on this end to power this unit. Um, these wires are very small uh, and you wouldn't want to do any charging uh, with this little cord uh, or if you were you'd have to maintain very low amperage uh, to do it. But what I'm going to be able to do is power this unit off of my cigarette lighter in the car and to, just to do a monitoring. And again, I'm not charging or discharging, I'm just doing monitoring with that little cable. Um, if I was going to do any serious charging or discharging, I'd use the much hardier uh, this guy and uh, not hooked up to my car uh, power plant. Uh, the other advantage to using this setup in the car is that I'll be able to monitor um, the 12 volt system uh, with the DC to DC converter and all that in the car uh, through the cigarette lighter. So that's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, or at least I hope it'll be cool and it'll, hopefully it'll work. <laughs> I haven't tested any of this yet. That's kind of the purpose of today's experiment. Um, so on the other end, we have these little banana jacks. Uh, and these are pretty cool. Again, they probably won't come out of camera very well, but they have like a recessed banana jack in this plastic casing. And um, let's show you the red one, probably be easier to see. Yeah, so there's like that. And that plugs in here. And is how you run this, this power lab is off these little banana jacks. And you can you know, put additional banana jacks in if you're gonna do multiple batteries at a time, uh, kind of in parallel and so forth. But uh, just the two is all I really need. So now when this comes from the factory, uh, the power lab, it has spliced into th these cables uh, two 40 amp fuses. Uh, they're big old honking like automotive fuses for 12 volts, 40 amps, DC. Um, but they're soldered into the line and I blew them up um, in various screw ups with my previous power lab uh, where I shorted the ends and so forth and I blew them up. So. I've now soldered these together uh, made, and then covered them in electrical tape. So we just have the leads. And I put on, these are actually um, 50 amp DC um, re, uh, auto resetting uh, circuit breakers. 
Is that right? I don't know. But yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, so there's not a switch or anything on here. They, they automatically reset when they trip, but um, so far these don't get terribly hot. Um, that was one of the problems that I actually had with the, with the original fuses, was that the fuses got so hot um, that they actually melted through a piece of my car, um, like the uh, cover on the, on the rear um, taillights has a little divot in it where the fuse got so hot from when I was discharging or charging a cell uh, that it melted that. So these are much safer uh, as far as the heat goes. In theory, they'll trip in, in a short situation and not uh, destroy another power lab like I've done in the past uh, when I ran it unfused and then shorted it and popped the damn thing. So anyway, <laughs> long story short, always have some kind of fuse or breaker and hopefully these will do the trick. Um, and so anyway, so what I normally do when I'm charging or discharging my little uh, calb cells is I've got these... but. Um, alligator clips, big old suckers, um, and a fairly beefy cord that are from a, a battery charger uh, that had died, I don't know, a long time ago. Uh, so I res or <laughs> used those, and so I just take these little uh, eye things and put them on here, and positive to positive, negative to negative, and, and charge the cell. So that's worked out pretty good. Uh, the cords don't get too hot, and it just works. As you can see, there's some uh, carbon scoring on these things from when, when they sparked. Um, and those were during those little incidents where I had a... <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of these fell on a battery terminal farther down in the, in the, in the pack and uh, sent more than the 3 volts uh, through there and blew up my previous power lab. Um, so Or damaged it internally so that it's... Uh, I never did get a response back from Reeve Electrics. I sent them multiple emails. I called them and left messages on their voicemail, uh, just trying to you know find out what it would take to repair the unit that I damaged. And yeah, they never got back to me. So, in a in a pinch, since I needed to finish my bottom balancing and get it back on the road, I just bought another one. Um, you know, again, they're not terribly expensive, and they are they're very feature rich. So. Not real happy with the lack of support, but at the same time, you know, they're not that expensive and it works, so whatever. <laughs> um, so what I've done here for today is I want to monitor uh, some cells in the pack while I'm driving. Um, and I want to, or actually one cell in the pack while I'm driving, so I'm going to hook this up with these little, I think these are 14 gauge wires, um, that'll run all the way into the engine compartment. And then they have little eyelets on them. Uh, so I'll just hook them onto here, and uh, <laughs> we'll have this unit in the car, uh, you know, in the passenger compartment, where I can, you know, monitor it and look at the screen if I need to or whatever. Um, and most importantly, I'll be hooking it up with its little USB adapter uh, that plugs right into the power lab, and you plug that into USB on your laptop, and you can actually monitor. Uh, and record everything going on with that cell. Uh, again, it's just the voltage. You know, we're not going to be able to see the amps going through it um, because the power lab isn't actually doing anything other than just pretty much watching the voltage go by. Um, but I can graph it and uh, you know have nice little data files that we can analyze later and so forth. So that just seems like that'll be a useful um, thing, and I'll be able to see on the screen of the laptop in the power lab software. Um, what the voltage is of that specific cell under various load conditions, like while well, I'm actually driving, accelerating on the highway, or accelerating on an on-ramp, rather, or trolling along on the highway. Um, so I think that'll be a useful thing. Um, and basically what I'm watching for is for that cell to get into the danger zone um, where you know it's, <laughs> it's getting down below 2.5 volts, um, when it's yeah resting, um, or you know probably two volts when it's under load. Um, but basically, I'll just keep keep track of it as I'm driving, and uh, that's how I'm gonna kind of monitor when that cell is in trouble. Um, and I'm gonna put it on the one cell, <laughs> uh, number three, uh, coming from the top of my front battery box, and you know monitor that to hopefully uh, track when my pack hits empty uh, before it causes you know, further damage to it. 
Um, so anyway, well, as I'm doing this 100 mile test, I'll be monitoring what I know to be the weakest cell in my pack, and hopefully that'll be something useful. Um, so uh, just as a, as a final note on this little uh, connection, just so these terminals don't touch anything, um, they're zip tied together apart from each other, but I also put on some of this little uh, wire loom, I just kind of stick it on the end of it um, and secure it down with a zip tie or something so that it isn't going to go anywhere, isn't going to touch anything by accident. So, anyway, that is the plan for the <laughs> uh, monitoring stuff. I'm going to go out and get this all installed in the car and uh, then we'll get we'll get going. So I'll be back in a few.